Hello guys, my name is Sandeep and uh, in this session we are going to start a new chapter which deals with the magnet. Okay, so I know that everybody have seen the magnet somewhere. The magnet could be of any shape here in the diagram. In this picture I can see some magnets which has the circular disc type shape, right? Small circular shape, right? Okay. So these are the magnets with the different types, right? Then now just consider one example here. Consider your mother is sewing some clothes with say some very small, very small needle, right? And uh, consider if that needle fills on the ground, falls on the ground, right? And uh, your mother wants to wants you to find that needle, okay? So how you can do that? It's very difficult because it is a very small needle and uh, in our home there are a lot of things, right? It, the needle could go uh, behind the table, below the table we can say, below the bed, behind the cupboard, anywhere, it could be anywhere. How to find it, right? Now, now just say that you have one small magnet like this, right? This magnet or bar magnet we can say. You have that bar magnet also, right? So think on that, how you can find that needle using this magnet, right? So what you can do, simple thing, take a, take a one big stick, right? Tie that magnet to that end of the stick, we can say, and uh, just move that stick everywhere on the floor, as well as below the bed, below the table, where you think the, the needle could be, right? What will happen? That needle will get stick to that magnet, okay? So this is the one of the daily life example we can say of the magnet and this is useful, nice we can say that. So there are, these magnets are actually used in many terms you can say, right? So sometimes we have the magnet which holds the door also, right? So there are many properties of the magnets also. So what is the origin of this magnet? Where this magnet actually found? Right? So there was one very famous story of one shepherd Right, Shepherd, uh, which uh, who has the name of uh, name Magnus, we can say. Right, so that Magnus Shepherd has a stick. Now you know that uh, Shepherd people, right? They have some stick with them, and uh, that stick Magnus has that stick. And at the end of that, uh, end of the stick, it was a uh, iron material was there. Iron was wrapped, we can say, for the stick on the stick. Right, so he was just sitting, uh, and on. Uh, on you can say usual days, days something like uh, normal similar days. And what has happened in that case, one time, one day, that stick was very heavy to lift up. He was not able to lift up that uh, stick, right? It was, it was, he saw, he saw that it wasn't stuck on the stone, in the stone we can say, but it was just in contact with the stone, but it was very heavy. He cannot lift that stick, right? Then he checked that stone very carefully and he observed that that stick with the iron material wrapped around that stick, we can say at the end of the stick, is actually uh, in contact with that stone, right, which has some properties. In contact means we can say that stick is actually sticking to that stone, we can say. Okay. So there is some attraction he observed. That is very strange, right? Normally, we do not find any stick is uh, in contact with the stone and just sticking there. It is not easily getting out of the stone, right? But you observe that, right? So that stone actually had some properties and those properties are magnetic properties, right? So there we actually find this story goes very, very long ago. And uh, then uh, scientists did some research on that stone and that stone is actually called as lodestone also. Lodestone means actually it has property to attract some materials like iron. Okay. So this is the magnets story we can say. Okay. So now let's start with our chapter. And let's see what we are going to do in this chapter. Okay. Okay. So we are going to cover these topics. Right. What is the magnetic effect? We already have seen the very small story and we also know the use of that magnet, right? To find a needle, you will be able to find a needle next time. So what is the magnetic effect? When uh, properties of magnetic fields 
right? Everything is related to magnetic, right? Or magnetic fields mean means what? You know the normal term, normal word field, right? Field means we can consider any take any example that crop field, right? So where we actually grow the crops, right? Similarly, that similar to that we can say what is magnetic field? Wherever there is a magnetic effect, we can say will be the magnetic field, right? We'll also see some properties of that. There is another point magnetic field due to current carrying wire. Right now, consider if there is a, we know the current is flowing through all the conductors, right? We have seen that in the electricity chapter, right? So if the current is flowing through the conductors, that current, that conductor or that current, we can say, also creates some magnetic field there. So can I say using the electricity, we can create the magnet? That's very really right, right. So it has a very huge applications in our daily life, you can say, right. So using this uh, current electricity, we can create the electromagnets. Those are very, very big magnets, right. There is so uh, if you do some research on this topic, that there is a train in Japan, I guess, right. The train is called as a Manglev train. Manglev train is completely or based on this magnetic magnetism application, we can say, right? What they do actually, the magnetic train, uh, we know the, our normal trains, right? In normal trains, there are some rails like this, right? And uh, these are the iron rails and train obviously has some wheels on both the sides, right? Like this and train is going to move on this part, okay? So this is our normal train. You can see. Okay. In the Manglev train, what is the process? If this is the rail type material, it's not actually the rail. Train is going to move, or we can say, if this is the train, consider. Let me take another color. Yes. So they found out something train like this and train doesn't have wheels, but it is going to float. We can say float a little bit, not a big amount, but a little bit on this rails because of the magnetic repulsion. We can say there is a repulsion between these rails type material. We can say and a train, right? It is completely based on the magnetic repulsion. So obviously what will happen as there is no wheels, there is no friction, right? If there is no friction, there will be less energy required. So this is the application of the magnetic field, which we can generate through the current carrying coil. Then there are some uh, materials, which is, which are called as uh, electromagnets, right? So when we say about the electromagnets, when the electricity is passed, obviously we can create the magnet, huge magnet we can create, which are useful in many applications, right? Uh, just for example, just lift one car. If you want to lift the car, right? What you can do? create a very big magnet using this current carrying wire in the, then you can lift the car, simple, right? Then next topic we want to cover is a suspended bar magnet. Bar magnet we already know, right? What is bar magnet? Bar magnet is uh, this type of magnet with that with N and North and South Pole, right? What are the North and South Pole? North, we can say it represents the North direction, South represents the South direction obviously. What is the meaning of suspended bar magnet? Suspended means what? Let's hang this magnet. Right? Let's punish this magnet. And hang. Right? What will happen? This is called a suspended bar magnet. Right? Now, what happens if you suspend the bar magnet? We are going to see that part. And uh, similarly, according to that, also we can see how the compass works. Compass means I'm not talking about the compass which we have in our school, which we do carry in our school, which contains the paint, pencil, etc. No, no, not that. Compass means the small instrument which is used to denote the directions, right? Like that. And the next, we are also going to see some north and south pole of the magnet and how they works. What is the magnetic field generated because of all of them, etc., etc. Okay. So let's start our chapter. So first of all, what is the magnetic effect? Magnetic effect means it is the ability of magnet 
to attract the or uh, we can say object that contains some iron iron material right and so i have given i have given the example of the needle small needle how to find that use the magnet and magnet is going to attract that needle capture that needle right so this magnetic effect property or ability we can say we are going to use that property to find our needle okay so obviously can magnet attract every object can it attract the paper can it attract the clue no it's not possible right so uh, definition says the magnetic effect you can see it is the ability to attract objects that contain some iron right so magnet can attract iron we can say right or the objects that have some iron right or properties like iron we can say right? so magnet is going to attract those part so whatever objects which are get attracted by the magnet we are going to call those as magnetic object magnetic objects again okay. we can say for example iron ray and others which magnet do not attract do not attract we are going to call those as non magnetic materials or non magnetic objects can you tell me the example for non magnetic objects which magnet could not could not attract can i say it is plastic yes magnet could not attract plastic what about paper wood right so all these are the materials which magnet cannot attract let's call them as non magnetic oh, materials right okay then let's see there are different types of magnets you can see bar magnet is a very common magnet right then no uh, one another magnet is called as a horseshoe magnet right now remember every magnet should have two poles poles means north pole and south pole right so here you can see for the bar magnet if you look closely right, you can maximize your screen if you want to this is re this is written as en en over here and uh, you can see the yes is written over here so en represents the north pole and yes represents the south pole right similarly some magnets could be of this type or as horse shoe magnet now remember this point is very important right in exam they are going to ask you that uh, what is the, what are the different types of magnet right you should also be able to draw some diagram for that right remember that so there is a second type horse shoe magnet again you can see north pole south pole is also there right third type is rod magnet or rod magnet also there will be north and south pole right? then ring magnet is there it's some kind of ring with the hole inside right then uh, we have the disc magnet at the start we saw some magnets right those are actually small circular magnets which are called as disc magnet so very simple uh, differentiation between ring and disc we can see for the ring magnet there is a small hole in between and uh, for this magnet it is solid completely solid we can say there is no hole right and the uh, last part is last type is wand magnet right wand means what it is just like a rod we can say right wand means you can uh, take the example of harry potter right harry potter has some wand that he uses to do the magic thing is right so that is kind of wand so there are these different types of magnets we can say okay remember very carefully bar magnet horseshoe magnet rod ring disc and wand okay so in exam you have to write this types of different types of magnets we can say okay now let's see the properties of magnetic field so here what i can see so which type is that can anybody guess that yes that is the horseshoe magnet right so for this horseshoe magnet we want to find some uh, we want to write or any magnet we can say not horseshoe only but any magnet there are properties for the magnetic field right even if you can you could consider the not our normal bar magnet also right so here this is a magnet and the uh, things you can see here are we can say those are iron fillings iron fillings means 
very small small particles of those iron material which could be attracted towards the magnet right so obviously you can see for the north and south pole there are lot of iron fillings are attracted by these two poles right and uh, as you go away from the magnet right it will be less and less and less right also you can see some uh, direction type also right there is some also direction for this magnetic field we can say okay so like this can i mark something like this this one this one this one right so there is some also direction on which that iron fillings are getting gathered we can say right similarly here also you can see outside right these are direction something like this so what i can say for this magnetic field there are some directions very simple okay so obviously it will it is going like this like this like this going away and when we are going moving closer to north and south direction uh, magnetic field will increase there right so this is a simple thing we can say okay then we can also talk about the properties of uh, magnets right so these the these are the properties of the magnetic field that they have some directions we can say the strength strength of the magnet is closer to the poles of the magnet right so iron fillings will get attracted like this so we can also do one small example one small activity here right what you can do take any bar magnet uh, any bar magnet or shoe magnet anything right go outside and uh, wherever there is a sand we can say right on the ground there is a lot of sand just put that uh, magnet in that sand if there are some iron fillings iron particles in your sand right then what is going to happen that iron fillings is going to uh, get attached to the magnet now everywhere in uh, let's say in different places there are different amount of iron fillings or iron content we can say in our ground right so you can take that magnet to different places and find out how much iron content is there that will get attached to our magnet right okay so this is the one thing you can do then now as i said let's talk about the properties of magnet so these are the different directions we can see for the magnet so for the magnets what i can say consider the first property that poles of the magnet poles of magnet we already discussed about this one that uh, magnet have north pole and south pole right there are two poles for the magnet then you can say directional magnet or direction of magnet let's say so we already talked about the magnetic field magnetic field means what i will repeat again that uh, there is some effect of the magnet in some direction right in this uh, diagram also we can see some directions in which the iron fillings are getting attracted towards the magnet so this there is a magnetic field so magnet also has a direction or we can say it shows north and south direction north and south direction right okay third property we can say like poles like poles repel each other and unlike poles attract each other right so what is the meaning of that this is uh, no like poles like poles means what and unlike poles means what now consider um, let's take two small car, toy cars like this okay so these are small two toy cars i'm not talking about the actual car take the small toy cars like this right attach magnet here bar magnet let's attach one bar magnet on this toy car so consider this is one magnet let's say north pole and south pole like this right we know that bar magnet has north pole as well as south pole similarly attach one more magnet here let's say this is north pole and this is south pole right 
what you can observe in this case is if this two car keeps together with the magnets on their top right you will observe that this car are going to go away from each other right why they are going away from each other because they have the north and north sides of the magnet towards each other right now let's repeat the example this uh, activity let's take this two cars and now what i'm going to do this is our one car one toy car again i will repeat i'm not talking about the actual cars let's take the two small cars like this and let's keep the magnet again this magnet yen uh, yes as it is the second magnet now we are going to reverse this magnet so let's put south pole here and north pole here okay right? uh, in this case what you are going to observe is these two magnets are coming closer to each other means can i say for the first case let's divide this one this let's call this as the repulsion repulsion means as we have written in the property like poles repels each other and unlike poles attract each other so this is we can say this is the attraction okay so unlike pole means what north pole of one magnet and the south pole of the second magnet you can say those are the repulsion or uh, attraction right like this <laughs> so these are some properties uh, of the magnet you can say let's before moving forward let me point out two more properties just a minute let me write it here okay so fourth property is fourth property of the magnet is magnetic magnet or magnetic poles we can say magnetic poles exists in a pair now what is the meaning for every magnet whether it could be a bar or shoe disc magnet ring magnet or wand or rod magnet right everywhere the one property is very common that both have the north pole as well as south pole right so for the bar magnet we have already seen that north and south poles are there even for shoe magnet there are north and south pole rod magnet will also have some they haven't shown it here but let's consider these are the north and south pole ring also for the ring and disc what we can say one face let's say top top of this disc is the north pole and the bottom side of the disc magnet is going to be south pole like that similarly wand magnet there are two obviously there are two opposite ends so one will be north one will be south so magnetic poles existing pair so simple meaning you cannot get the i can write you cannot find monopoles monopoles means what a single pole you cannot find a north pole or south pole wherever you are going to find the magnet just like our shepherd that is named named magnus right when he found a stone that stone also has the north and south magnet that stone we can call it as a uh, natural magnet right so it is naturally found on our earth and these are actually the artificial magnet we actually prepare manufacture this type of like so types of magnet but doesn't matter whichever is the magnet it will have the two poles it could be uh, there will be a south pole as well as there will be north pole right but you can you could never find a monopole right that is north pole separately or south pole separately right even many scientists are studying on that researching on that to find a north pole separate right but it is still till now it is it is not it hasn't been possible to find a two different poles or single poles we can say right so simple property here we can say that north and south pole are in pair they exist in pair okay then last property of this magnets are multiply number of we can say multiple number of magnets multiplying let's say multiplying property number of magnets 
what is the meaning of that let's discuss now i can see the bar magnet on the screen right let me draw the one bar magnet here south pole and north pole and so in the previous property we have said that we cannot find the south and north pole right separately they will be together always so let's try one thing let's cut this bar magnet there is south and north pole right what will happen if i cut can i get the south and north pole separately yes i can see there right no that is very wrong right remember what is going to happen if you cut this magnet obviously you will get the two pieces like this for this magnet i know this is south i know this is north now are those monopoles no in the previous property we said we cannot find the monopoles so what will happen if you cut this magnet remember this new north pole will get generated here similarly new south pole is going to get generated here right so this is the property of the magnet if you cut this magnet again new uh, we can say new north and south pole are going to develop but you are you are not going to get south pole separately north pole separately let's cut this magnet again right what will happen i can get right i can get this as the again small magnet again i will get the four different magnets right south pole will be here and this will be north north will again generate here then now uh, i have the north already here south will generate here south north north and this one is south okay so if you cut the magnet you are not going to get monopole you are going to get again we can say dipole or two different poles and one pole is going to generate one is already there one will get generate okay so we can say these are the different properties of magnets and magnetic fields okay next our next point is magnetic field due to current carrying wire as we discussed right earlier that in the there is a current flowing through even in our house there is a current flowing through different wires right if the current is flowing through it then uh, we can say magnetic field will be generated right so if the magnetic field is generated means current carrying coil is going to act as a magnet right can i say that all the current conductors are acting as a magnet no actually that that magnetic field is not that much right negligible we can say if you want to act uh, if you want to make it act as a magnet then obviously there are properties then uh, how much current will be there etc etc we need all those things right so but here we can consider the current carrying wire now you know this electrical component right so consider this is our battery battery is denoted by what positive as well as negative the bigger one is the positive terminal and the smaller one is a negative terminal current is going to flow like this he is connected here right so obviously if the current is flowing through this what is going to happen we are going to get some magnetic field in this section okay like this okay, here magnetic field will be generated now consider the if, I, if you reverse the battery reverse the battery means what take connect the positive terminal now on this side and negative terminal on this side why there are lot of uh, positive negative terminals right remember normally when we say one cell is connected like this it will we can represent it by like this if you connect another cell let's say in series so if i connect two cells i will get something like this why we connect the more than one cell to get the emf large emf right large voltage large power large energy we can say right so this is the effect of the current carrying coil and uh, as we talked discussed earlier also that what is the uses of that maglev train we talked about right uh, the magnetic field is created by what obviously we cannot put the very big natural magnet there or bar magnet right for train we have to create a very big path of the magnetic field right therefore we can use the current carrying wire there and which is going to create some magnetic field right also mm, for the electromagnets i talked about right or the electromagnet when uh, we want to lift the car we took the example of that electric car took the we want to lift the car what we are going to do we are going to create some electromagnets there as well right how just pass the current through the current carrying coil and uh, we will get some electromagnet obviously there is a lot of uh, process actually it's not that easy to get the electromagnet we will need the iron material for that and that iron is going to act as a electromagnet for some time right 
right? Then, now let's talk about the direction of this magnet, right? In the previous case, we have seen right here, we have seen that there are some direction uh, in this ion fillings are getting attracted, right? Like this. If you remember, we talked about this one. This, like this. This is also going to come like this from north to south. So, in general, what I can say, the magnetic field will have some direction on which these ion fillings are getting attracted, right? So, simple thing is that uh, the magnetic field is from north pole to south pole. So, let's talk about the, all this magnet. So, consider this is the north pole, right? I can show the field lines like this. These are called as a field or field lines of the magnetic field. It looks something like this, right? It starts from the north side and going into the south side. Okay. So remember this part. Similarly, here also we have seen that uh, it is starts from the north and goes on to the south pole like this. So we have seen this iron filling thingy, right? So it will be, it will look something like say a similar thing will happen for this. We can say it will be like this from north to south. South is where? South is at the bottom of this disk magnet, right? Therefore, we can show the magnetic field like this. Okay. So magnetic field have direction that much we know, right? From north to south, north is going to attract south and south is going to attract north. And accordingly, uh, if you keep the magnet by magnet, ion fillings are going to create that path, right? Like this, right? Ion fillings are going to arrange themselves in what? This magnetic lines path. Okay. Similarly, now we are not considering magnet. What we are saying, there is a current carrying coil or current carrying wire, we can say. And because of that wire, how much, how will be the field? That's what we want to find out. So what we can do? There is one rule which is called as the right hand thumb rule. Right hand thumb rule. Now, what this rule suggests, consider a uh, straight current carrying wire like this. Right? So, and let's say current's direction is upward. Obviously, how to get that direction? What we can do? We can just connect the some sail here like this. Right. So, oh, let's connect it in the reverse fashion. Positive is here. So current will go upward, right? We know the current flows from positive terminal to negative to terminal. So this will be our battery. Let me remove the battery, right? We can just consider now there is one conductor which is carrying current. <laughs> For this conductor, magnetic field will be generated. So how the magnetic field will generate? For that, we are going to use the right hand thumb rule. Right hand thumb rule means what? Obviously, right hand, we consider the right hand and thumb, right? So what we are going to do, imagine this conductor. We have to imagine that we are now holding this conductor in our right hand, right? And, right? Now consider the pain is our conductor. Current is going. So I'm going to use this right hand. Just what I'm going to do. This is thumb. Thumb is going to represent the uh, current's direction like this. Curl fingers. This curl fingers. Curl these fingers. And this curl fingers are going to show me the direction of the magnetic field. Okay. Very simple to understand. And this right hand thumb rule is very important. We are going to use this rule many times in physics, right? Remember. Right. So what I can see, this curl fingers are going from outside to inside like this. Okay. Okay, so this is how it's the direction of the magnetic field. So in this diagram, I can show something like this. Dotted lines means behind the conductor, right? Very easy to understand. And this line is in front of the conductor. So fingers are curled like this. So for this straight conductor, they are curled fingers are coming from behind and from front, they are going uh, again behind the conductor, we can say, right? So can I say that direction, they are coming from the behind like this, from front, they are passing, and this will be the, this will, uh, we can see, is our direction of the magnetic field. So if you uh, place the ion fillings like that, then they will get arranged around this loop, we can say.
okay so this is how we can find out the direction of the magnetic field and magnetic field is produced by whom magnetic field is produced by our current carrying wire okay then um, let's take another example here mm. if this is the coil coil is like this right and now in this coil current is flowing like this okay so what i can do i want to find the direction of magnetic field now we are going to use the same rule right hand thumb rule but we are just going to use or use uh, some notations right let's replace some notations in the initial case what i said that the current is going to represent the direction of the sorry thumb is going to represent the direction of the current same right now consider the curl fingers are going to represent the direction of the current because current is flowing in the circular fashion like this so i can say if the direction of the current is represented by the curl fingers like this right fingers are getting curl in the circular fashion then thumb represents the direction of the you can say magnetic field so magnetic field will be like this if this is our conductor then upward will be the direction of the magnetic field now let's consider the case in which the let's say this is coil and current is going like this so if the current is going like this again we have to use what right hand thumb rule so now curl the fingers in the opposite direction like this so what is the direction of the thumb outside right or we can say down right so magnetic field will look something like this okay similar i can do this thing to for the current which is flowing downward right if this conductor is straight then the thumb is going to represent the current direction if the conductor is circular then the fingers curl fingers are going to represent the current direction now let's find out what is the direction of this magnetic field when the current is going uh, down right so what we can do thumb represents right so this is our conductor now where the direction of the current downward so thumb should represents downward direction right so like this so if this is the downward direction curl fingers are going like this right so what is coming from behind and going uh, in front of that right so can i say obviously direction will look something like this now this is the front side right dotted is the back side and the direction will be like this opposite to the first case we can say so these are the different cases for the straight conductor as well as the conductor or we can see in the circular loop right okay now next let's move to the next part now this is the property which we have already seen right here you can see opposite pole opposite poles attract and uh, like poles what they are repelling right so like poles means you can see in the diagram that the like poles mean north north are there or south south are there they are repelling each other and uh, opposite means what north north and south pole are attracting now just think on this and tell me the answer we talked about the magnetic ring right magnetic ring means what uh, a tree is little bit little we can say it is just floating floating on that rails right so tell me for that train which property should we have used attracted attracting property or repelling property which property right? obviously right we have to use repelling property if we cannot use the attractive property otherwise that railway will come to come on the rails right that is not uh, our aim right it should float when it will float when it will repel each other right okay so this is just one uh, property of we have already seen this opposite poles opposite means uh, unlike poles we said unlike poles attract each other and like poles repel each other okay so this is just the another property you can say now let's talk about this suspended bar magnet right uh, in uh, also in property of the magnet we have seen this part 
that if you suspend this magnet, if you punish this magnet, hang this magnet, right? It will show some uh, particular direction. Right? So what you can do, just take a magnet. Now remember, we actually don't know. Consider just consider that we don't know which one is the north pole and which one is the south pole. What we are going to do? Just uh, suspend this magnet like this and just give some push push to this magnet. Now what we can actually observe that this magnet is going to play or get stable or rest at some direction, right? So what we can do, just draw some perpendicular lines on the ground like this and uh, let's see. Okay. I can draw one line like this. Okay. Do one more thing, give him push, give the magnet push, let's say from another direction with different forces, right? Then uh, what will happen? Uh, again, let let it come at the rest, right? If we if you observe when it when they are going to come at the rest, again you can draw the perpendicular like this, and try to join this time. You can see in the second time also the line coincides with the original line, right? Try this experiment again, give the push and find out the when it is going to come at a race, find out the line on the ground. You can see every time you are going to get the same line, right? So what we can say that was the property that is a directional magnet. We can say that if you suspend the magnet, it is going to align itself in the one particular direction only, right? It will never change its direction, right? So why? Because this magnet, we can say it is going to align, align itself in the north-south direction. North-south direction. Right? So how to find out which one is the north direction and which one is the south direction? Right? We assume that we don't know that this magnet is marked as a north and south pole. Right? So what they did? Now, simple thing we know that uh, our sun, sun rises at east. So in the morning, do one thing that uh, go to the east, uh, look at the sun, we can say, right? So we already know if this is the north, this is east, this is our south point, and this is our west point, right? North, east, south, west. So if these are the four di different directions, what you are going to do? Just face on the, face towards the, we can say, rising sun. Rising sun means we already know that it is the east direction. Right? So, observe is like this. So, what you can see, the left hand, left hand will point here. Right? So, on this, on this ground, right? go there, face the east direction, look at the east direction like this. So, and stretch your left hand. Left hand is going to show what? North pole. Right? So, this will be your north pole. And uh, the uh, other will be our, your south pole, right? So north pole is actually called as north seeking pole. North seeking pole. And the opposite pole is called as south seeking pole. Okay? And that's why we can uh, name them as a north pole as well as south pole, right? So did you understood this experiment? Right. If you do have some time, you can try to do, do that thing. Right. What you have to do? Take one magnet, suspend it. Suspend means what you can do? Just take one stand, tie a string to that magnet, and like that, just let it flow like any in the any direction. Right. So just give one push, you will get one normal line. When you draw some perpendicular on that, do the same experiment again. Remember that it is going to go into the uh, always going to align itself in the same direction, it is not going to change its direction, right? So this is a simple experiment you can do. And uh, again, I told you how to find the North Pole and South Pole. Right? For North Pole, look at the rising sun. Rising sun is where? When? Is it in morning or evening? Right? Obviously, it is in morning session, we can say. Right? So in the morning, look at the east and uh, stretch your left hand, you will get the North direction. That is called as actually North Seeking Pole. Different. The other one is the south seeking pole. Okay. Sure. So this is the example or property of the suspended bar magnet. Now, this same property 
is actually used uh, in compass. Compass means what? Right? Compass is the instrument which looks something like this now. You can see it in the picture. There are two pictures. In the second picture, you can see. Well, let's talk about the first picture. In the first picture, there's a one small needle inside, like a pin, right? Very small black colored pin, right? And you can see in the second diagram that that pin is actually rotating. One glass cover is kept on that pin, right? So we can say that pin is pivoted at some fixed point, right? And it is allowed to rotate. Also, let's uh, see on this uh, dial of this uh, compass, you can see this compass, you can see it just look like our normal watch. It also has this nice size of our normal watch dial, right? And on that dial, you can see the yen is written there. Yen means North Pole, right? And obviously, there are some uh, angles there, right? And also, we already know that um, north opposite to north there will be south here you can if you max zoom the screen you can see the south similarly here you will see the west w is written here east is written right so obviously this compass is going to show us some directions right okay so how they actually show the di direction we already have seen the property of the suspended magnet what happens when we suspend the magnet it is going to align itself in north and south direction yen pole means North seeking pole. Yes pole means south seeking pole. South seeking pole, right? So what you can do wherever you want to find the directions, right? In the uh, in the earlier times, right? Nowadays we uh, even can use our mobiles, right? Mobile phones to find out the direction. Just open the GPS and try driving everywhere, right? You can find out where is the north and where is the south. It's very easier now. But in the previous time, uh. Travelers used to have this small instrument, which is called as compass, right? On this compass, there is a needle like this. And if you want to find out the direction, where is the north, where is the south, what they are, just place this uh, compass, we can say, on horizontal table like this, right? So, for example, you can also see some maps there, right? Maps are down on this, on which this second compass is kept, right? So, you want to if you want to find where if you are at some particular point and consider this point some particular place is in which direction just put the compass there that needle is going to rotate right and needle is going to align itself in the north direction right you can see closely here for this compass i can see some arrow here at one point needle is also not uh, equal we can say similar on the both the sides or both the ends here we can see the arrow here even in this small needle, so if you observe very carefully, right, there is one dot on this side, on this particular side, there is one dot. Okay. So when this, obviously this needle is not going to flow, uh, oscillate like this only, it is going to st uh, stop at some particular point. And that particular point is, we can say, we have to, what we have to do, suppose this uh, arrow stops something like this here. Right? It moves, moves and stops something like that. Then try to move that compass, rotate that compass such that this arrow is not going to move now. It is going to be stable. Rotate your compass so that N poles come to, comes up to this point. Right? So what I can say, this direction is going to show me north direction. Right? So this is, this is what uh, most of the Travelers used to do, even in the pirates, you must have heard somewhere, pirates of Caribbean, right? You must have heard, right? There are, those are smugglers on the ships, right? Or even our normal ships also, they, they also use this. They used to use this compass, right? Because there is a big ocean, big, big ocean, and how you can find a, a direction, right? There is nothing to see on the land, actual, at, at least we can see something on the land. According to that, we can find out which one is the direction. We can mark the direction. But in ocean, there is nothing, right? So what you have to do, you have to use this compass and you can easily find out the different directions, right? Okay. Then, uh, you can also try one more thing for this compass. If you want to create your own compass, what you can do? Take one small needle, right? In the next session, we are going to also find out uh, how to convert this small needle into our temporary compass or uh, temporary magnet, we can say. 
right if you can if you take this small needle magnetize it right we will discuss this how to magnetize this right and what you are going to do just find some cork we can say cork means small we can say a lead on the bottle right put that needle on the cork such that it is free to rotate and put the whole cork and the needle thing needle is on the top like this so uh, suppose this is the top view you understood the top view right top view means if i watch this cork from the top water is there we have kept the top uh, cork like this right so if this is the cork let's say our needle will be look, look something like this it is kept on this cork okay so this is the needle so temporarily magnetized now we will see how to magnetize that needle right in the next session so if the needle is kept on the cork in the whole thing put it in the water we can say see this needle will act as a compass like this compass and it is going to show you the it is going to allow uh, align itself into north and south direction accordingly you can find out the north and south i also told you how to find the north and south direction right if it is not marked right on compass we already have some arrow there right so arrow is going to tell us what is which one is north but this needle we have to use our that method right we have to take the help from the sun right so this is about the compass we can see okay now it's more ahead Okay. So these are the whole three part of our first session. So what we have studied, let's recap a little bit about that. So at the start, we we have seen what are the different types of magnets, and uh, yes, as I said, this is important thing. Uh, they could ask you in the exam what are the different uh, types of magnets, right? So very basic, very common magnet is a bar magnet, right? And uh, it is actually not the natural magnet. Natural magnet also we talked about that. Natural magnet is uh, what is natural magnet? It, that story we heard that about the Shepherd called Magnus. He found the natural magnet, right? Lodestone we can say. Lodestone is also the name of that natural magnet. Then uh, this bar magnet, horseshoe magnet is there. Rod magnet, ring is there, then disc is there, and one is our Harry Potter's wand, right? Not Harry Potter's wand, but wand magnet, we can say. So these are the different types of magnets we know. Okay. Then uh, we also seen that what are the magnetic properties? If the fillings are there. Fillings means what? Iron fillings, small, small particles of the iron. And if we use those particles, uh, to in the you can say in the keep near in near to the magnet they will align themselves in particular path that path we call as magnetic field or magnetic field lines we can say so we also know that magnetic field lines have some path then right? then we also talked about the some properties of the magnet what are the properties that there are two poles right north pole and south pole then uh, we also know that like poles what like poles means what same poles north north poles like poles what they repel each other right simple thing and what about the unlike poles unlike means if you consider north pole and south pole they are going to attract each other right so we have seen those things too then uh, we also have seen that uh, we cannot get the monopole monopole means what we cannot find out the north pole only north pole is there only south pole is there you cannot find that right so magnetic poles do exist in pair only pair means what both north and south pole will be there so what happens yes i have to recall that one what happens if i cut the magnet into right if there is south and north pole if i cut the magnet what will happen right i am going to get the two uh, different poles against how if you cut the magnet the if south pole is already there north pole is going to appear right on our path we can say okay on our magnet right so this is how we can get the two poles again right? but we will never we are not we are never going to get the single monopole we can say right so they do exist in uh, pairs right this we have seen then uh, we also have seen the magnetic and non-magnetic materials right? iron material is a uh, 
magnetic material i can say or uh, metals which show some properties right needle needle is our also magnetic material we can say right similarly you can say non magnetic means which uh, magnet cannot attract those are our non magnetic material like uh, plastic paper clothing etc magnet cannot attract those right then we have also seen uh, freely suspended magnet what happens if you suspend the magnet suspend means just take one rod and uh, tie the magnet to the string what will happen that magnet is going to align itself in same position doesn't matter how many times you apply the force on the magnet change the direction of the magnet it is going to come at rest at the same alignment same line you can say that line is going to show you north and south pole right we also know how to find out the north and south using the sun's direction right then uh then we talked about the compass compass uses the same principle that the uh, freely suspended magnets principle right it has the freely floating needle we can say in and who uses this nowadays we don't need the needle we have the mobiles we have the gps and etc all those things so we don't need those but in the earlier times travelers uh, travelers were using this thing right okay so we have seen this part also how the compass works what is the needle how the needle looks like right we have seen even we can see the needle in front of us right it also has some uh, north pole sign also there right in the first compass we can see there is arrow arrow shows the north pole in second diagram there is some dot on that one part of the needle which is going to show you the north pole this is how we can find out find out the north pole and so cool right we also know how to create our own uh, little compass using the needle fork and water system right so this is the whole chapter for today so let's uh, see some questions on this very simple and theoretical questions right so first question says magnetic attract right which option it could be whether it is iron piece or uh, pieces of cloth or pencil you already know that right magnet attracts the magnetic material we call them as magnetic material and iron is our magnetic material so magnet is uh, magnet is going to uh, attract iron pieces right very simple and uh, cloth and pencil we are going to call to call those as non magnetic materials right okay so next one the attractive power of bar magnet right It must be off here the attractive power of bar magnet is maximum where where they are maximum if you consider this is the bar magnet let's say yes poles are there right right and left ends are there right if you do remember the iron fillings right we have seen one example of the iron iron fillings are attracted maximum iron fillings are at the ends we can say Now this will, I think, this is sufficient information for you to answer this question, right? Where is the attractive power maximum? Where, right? At the both end, north and south pole, south end, you can say, right? Or oh, it is a equal. It, it should be actually along the bar magnet. I can say it is equal along the bar magnet means. This option says that uh, iron filling should also get attracted at the middle portion, but they do, but very less negligible. We can say, right? So maximum strains strain is, uh, is at both ends. We can say, okay. Let's move to the next question then. Magnet will always have how many poles? <coughs> Two poles, right? We have seen that we cannot find a monopole means we cannot find a single pole even if you cut the magnet. the other pole is going to get generated there so our answer is two poles very simple right okay. then list out the different types of magnets we have seen these types right i say that this question is very important for us so what are the different magnets first is a bar magnet then horseshoe magnet we have seen the shape of that horseshoe magnet right it's u type we can say then uh, there is a rod magnet a ring then disc is there and last one is harry potter's right wand magnetic cancel so these are the different types of magnets we can see 
simple right and what is the unit of magnetic field now this is an older question in uh, which we have studied but remember the unit for the magnetic field is called as tesla tesla is also one of the scientists right like newton then uh, you know the einstein also right so tesla is also one of the scientists and uh, for the unit of the magnetic field his name is given therefore we can say the unit of magnetic field is tesla when another unit is there for this magnetic field which is called as gauss so there are two units there magnetic field tesla and gauss gauss also we can say one of the scientists we also studied this electric field and magnetic field therefore its name is also given to be unit of the magnetic field we can say okay so this is all about the magnets we can say we have just seen some introduction introductory part in the next session we are going to see some more concepts about the magnetism also we will see the how the magnetic field works how the earth now remember the earth is also a very big magnet very huge magnet right our earth we you know the size of the earth earth is spherical right yeah so earth also acts as a magnet how it acts as a magnet we are going to see that part in our uh next session right okay so today we'll stop here if you do have any questions please put them on forum right and so i can answer those questions okay so we'll stop here today thank you very much have a nice day